Hello friends, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB. This is Nirsh Kumar Singh and you are watching ISTQB Foundation series. Finally, we're done with chapter four, a lot of things to explore and we had 11 questions from chapter four just for your kind of information and we are moving to chapter five, where chapter five is uh, going to talk about test management. There's going to be a lot of content to be discussed. So I'm going to make it as simple as possible to my best so that it can be easy for you to follow my tutorials. On the other side, I would also try to highlight this. We'll be having nine questions from here now. So it, it, it has a major share again in terms of uh, uh, the number of questions uh, after chapter four. So 11 and nine, I think 20 questions just from these two chapters. So I think this plays a really vital role to add value to your preparation and the examination as well. In chapter five, these are the topics what we'll be looking at, like test organization, what does it comprise of and what are the tasks and responsibilities. Test planning and estimation would tell you more about what is the planning and estimation. The good part is that we already know about these things. Uh, the test monitoring and control, we have already discussed this again in chapter one, which was a contribution from the overall test process. Configuration management is a small thing about version control. Uh, risk and testing is an introduction to the risk and what exactly we added as a top up to the process. How does it help you? What are the project risk and product risk? Whereas defect management is going to be about how do we manage and track the defect throughout the process and also understand what is defect report. So let's get started with the very first tutorial on this chapter that is 5.1, the test organization, where the test organization is generally spoken in terms of how independent the testing team can be. So generally when we talk about the independence of testing, this again comes back from the chapter one where we spoke about uh, having an independent team has a different psychology to find defects uh, from the developer or would be uh, you know very different in terms of finding different defects than developers. But uh, <clears throat> in some criteria, we have seen that generally people come with a different mindset and could help you to really fix out the things in a different manner from the end user perspective. But as we started analyzing the organizations, we came to know that uh, we have separate set of people uh, where a different organization drive a different independence of testing team. And we have got altogether five independent te testing team or five degree of independence on testing. So starting from the lowest to the highest, we say that uh, lowest being the no independent testers where developer test their own code. That means they are the one who are writing the code and testing their own code. Independent developers or testers within the development team, like another developer from the same team testing the code. The third degree is about uh, what we practice today, a separate independent test team testing the code within the same organization. Fourth is uh, business users, business organization members, or maybe non-functional testers are further independent within the testing team. No matter like if you are a tester of the organization and you're trying to help uh, test the functional levels, then you are not going to do the non-functional. We are trying to have further independence in the organization. Whereas the last one is about where the testers are completely outsourced. That means you do not have testers within your organization. So you only deal with development and the org testing is outsourced to some other organization. So now, of course, we have benefits of having a lower degree of independence and higher as well, where we do have drawbacks for both of them. So generally when it comes to low, we say that communication gap is eliminated and uh, we do not have uh, much time taken to fix a defect or understand the issues. It's like, you know, reporting time and fixing time gets very low and it increases the capacity on the productivity of the process. <clears throat> at, at the same time, <clears throat> excuse me, at the same time when you try about uh, independent testers, like in a completely uh, independent or highly independent side, we say that of course uh, it is helping the author bias to find different defects, but at the same time maybe it can be blamed for all other reasons. Like for example, let's look at the benefits and drawbacks of the independence of testing. Now here we are talking about the highly independent test teams where we say the benefits include independent testers are likely to recognize different kind of failures compared to developers of course because they are uh, having a, you know it's creating an author bias and they are separate from the one who has created because we say generally say that the psychology of human beings says that it is difficult to find our own mistakes so of course we are not so good at finding our own thing then why don't we just uh, you know, uh, give it to somebody else who can really look at it. 
And then the second one says, uh, an independent tester can verify a challenge or disapprove assumptions made by stakeholders during the specification and implementation of the system. So generally it happens to be like, you know, there are a few things which are unclear in the specification provided to you, then you start making certain assumptions in the beginning, where maybe it is business analyst or maybe it's the design team or the development team who would have done certain assumptions. But when you try to take an assumption, you do not verify yourself because, of course, it's you who has assumed it. But if an independent test team is there, can cross-check and understand whether your assumption was right or not. So these are some quick benefits of the same. Whereas the drawbacks include that isolation from the development team completely, like when you outsource, you uh, may start treating them like a third-party vendor rather than considering them as a part of the process. Developers may lose the sense of quality. Uh, I don't have to say you that, that what could be the reason for this, of course, when they do not get involved with any type of testing, of course, they may lose the sense of quality. Independent testers may be blamed or seen as bottleneck for the delays. Of course, we can put the blame on somebody else easily compared to your own team members. And independent testers may lack some important information, <clears throat> like you know the specification details or something when you try to communicate, or sometimes your standards comes into picture where you say that I cannot disclose these critical information with you. So, so generally you'll be asked with a question from this two uh, section that is either the benefit or the drawback. We generally do not see a question from the degree of independence, but of course from here. So please pay attention to this. The next topic here in the same uh, <clears throat> section is the task of a test manager. So generally we have been through this from the point of uh, understanding the chapter one, but let me just quickly review these things that what a test manager is held responsible for within an organization. So develop and review a test policy and test strategy. Of course, that's a core responsibility of the test manager to prepare them. Planning the test activity. Of course, test plan is a responsibility of the manager. Coordinating the plan with the project manager, product owner, and others, that is to help them uh, align the activities or understand their activities so that we can fulfill the characteristics of good testing from Chapter 2. Share testing perspective with other project activities, like integrating the other activities. Initiate the analysis and other phases of the test process. Prepare and deliver the test progress report and test summary report. We are going to talk about this in more detail in the upcoming topic. Support setting up the defect management and adequate configuration management. So selection of the tools, setting up the environment, all these things will be done by the manager. Introduce suitable matrices for monitoring. Support the selection and implementation of tools. So tool selection will be done by the manager and deciding on how much automation to be done. Decide about the implementation of the test environment. And of course, develop the skill set of the and careers of the tester. That means internal ramp up, recognizing the need of training, and so on. So putting it all together, these are the major responsibilities of a task manager when working across the you know, project or the process. Whereas on the other side, we do have testers' responsibilities listed here. If you're too, uh, you know, kind of like a senior resource of the organization, you may contribute and review the test plan prepared by the manager. You can also uh, start doing the activities or generally all the phases of the process, test process is done by the tester. Identify the test conditions, write the test cases, uh, require and prepare the test data. Everything is done by the test manager, prepare, uh, sorry, the tester. Create the detailed test execution schedule. Uh, that's about the priority and the dependencies. We are going to talk about it in the next tutorial. Executing the test, evaluating the results, documenting the deviations from the expected result, that is logging the defects and so on. Use appropriate tools for facilitating the test process. Automate test as needed, that means when you try talking about writing the test script, it is also a responsibility of the tester. And uh, evaluating the non-functional levels is also tester responsibility. And review tests developed by others as well. So that's a common typical task at the ground level, which you see that executing the activities is generally a responsibility of the tester. But approving things, deciding on things, and determining, uh, taking decisions, finding alternatives are all manager things. So putting it all together, <clears throat> this is what we have got in very first topic of the chapter five. And I think it's very straightforward to the point to be taken care. So all I would like, uh, like to ask you is that just concentrate on the points uh, specified here, and that would help you to answer the question in the examination. 
So thanks for watching the video team. Uh, here we are with the 5.1. We'll be coming back soon with the 5.2. So stay tuned for that. In case you are not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. It will help you to get quick notifications about the next tutorial on the same series as well as the different series of the tutorial. In case you have any query beyond this, feel free to comment below. I'm there to assist you always. Following that, of course, uh, I'll be there to assist you with anything beyond that as well. If you have any query about anything in your profession as well, you can put it across to me. So till then, keep learning, keep exploring about the same and preparing for the examination. Thanks for watching the video team. Happy learning.